Recorded live. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Pastor Eli James with another installment of the Voice of Christian Israel. The discussion today is going to be centered around the theory of relativity. Um, we'll probably talk a little bit about Albert Einstein and what, if anything, he had do had to do with creating the theory of relativity. In my opinion, very little. <laughs> okay. And, and that uh, my guest today is uh, Joel Meyer, okay, or you pronounce it Mayer, correct? Joel Mayer? Yes, long A. Yes. And um, uh, I'm just going to uh, quote uh, one, one verse from Acts chapter 17. That's verse 28. For in him, speaking of Yahweh, Paul speaking here of Yahweh, for in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we also are his offspring. So here, to me, Paul was clearly saying that we exist, our existence is dependent upon God. Isn't that what uh, what Paul is trying to say here, Joel? Uh, that certainly would be the way I would understand it. Okay, so Paul was a physicist, right? <laughs> well, you know, Jesus made a remark. Uh, my favorite remark in the Bible is a comment Jesus made, and I actually have it. I went... To uh, let me remind you what Jesus said. He said, Behold the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. Mm -hmm. But basically he's saying is that heat makes molecules and atoms move faster. Okay. So in other words, Jesus anticipated the atomic theory, and he also anticipated Brownian motion. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brownian motion. Okay, what does that mean? Brownian motion is basically that uh, uh, atoms and molecules collide, okay. and and then they move in random directions after they after they collide with one another. Okay. It's sort of like you, you, all you have to do is picture billiard balls sure. on a billiard table. Yeah. Okay. But then uh, isn't that rather chaotic, or is there? You know. But of course, the billiard table has boundaries, and the uh, and the balls you know stay with uh, on the table, and then reorganize themselves uh, usually pretty randomly. Correct. Okay, but that's your lead in now. Now let me tell you what you just what you just where you just took us into the arena of quantum mechanics. Okay. Quantum mechanics says that uh taken one particle at a time, these particles are behaving in a random manner. Okay. But when I look at them at a population, mm -hmm. all of a sudden laws of regularity appear. Really? Okay. Now let me give you an easy law an easy law would be the distribution of height in a population. Okay. You take any individual race, there's an average height for the members of the race, and there's a tall height for the members of the race and a short height. Yes. yes. And that's given by a bell-shaped curve, so that's where the regularity is. The mixing of the genes is completely random that determines what your height is going to be, but when you look at the whole population, you start to see regularity. Right, right. Okay, so as individuals, there is individuality, <laughs> okay, but as a race or as a species or as a, um, what, what's the mathematical term, as a domain, as a domain, uh, there's regularity. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's, that's one of the principles of quantum mechanics. All right. So in other words, what we have is individuality and group, uh, group mentality or group DNA at the same time. And, and of course, uh, I, I made this remark to someone I had breakfast with yesterday the Bible is the only religious book that I'm aware of that actually stresses the concept of liberty. So, but uh, all that also has to be um, granted within the confines of a certain domain. Obviously, you and I can't walk on water the way Yahshua Messiah did. His liberty is far greater than ours. But we have the liberty to choose good and evil, correct? Uh, freedom of choice, yes. That certainly would be our, uh, our, uh, 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 that is our, that is our right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, uh, you know, given that the fact that Yahweh's mind or Yahweh's consciousness is the field in which we operate, he's the one who determines how much free will we have and how much we don't have. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, wouldn't you say so? Wouldn't that be where we're at? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, you mentioned the, the fig tree. Um, I remember also when Jesus healed the blind man. He asked him, "What you know? Look at these men. He he had just regained his sight, and Jesus asked him to look at these men and to describe what they look like." 
And the man said they are as trees walking, which is a fascinating image. In other words, he could see, uh, in my uh, opinion anyway, he could see the invisible field that was surrounding men, you know, the, the men walking around, which is ordinarily not available to our vision. Um, uh, your comments on that? Uh, that would mean, that would be, the science of that would be that he had some sense of radiation energy. He could feel heat. Yes. He could sense if he was on a desert or near a cold stream because he was only blind in the visual range mm-hmm. of the electromagnetic spectrum. So he wasn't blind to infrared energy or perhaps at the higher ends of the energy uh, yes. spectrum. Okay, so he was able to see the force field that surrounded the men as they walked around, and it looked, and to him, it looked like a tree. Which is yes, because they were blanking, they were blanking out, they were blanking out the energy coming off the soil. Okay, <laughs> all right. So uh, would it be then correct to say that uh, because our visual field is so strong and we identify with vision so strongly, and we focus on that? That, and it gives us so much information, very much critical information to, to get through our daily lives, that possibly for that reason we start to uh, lose the other sense. You know, let's, let's call it the sixth sense of uh, these other energy patterns, which uh, many studies of children have showed that they actually retain this sense for quite some time. But since they, they're not encouraged to retain this sense, they, they concentrate on the five senses. And therefore, we don't see in that broad spectrum that you're talking about. Right. In other words, they're, they're, because they don't use it, there's a certain amount of atrophy. Yes. There's disuse atrophy. And also, they're getting enough input. When they do go visual, they get enough input that their, their sensorium is satisfied. So uh-huh. they, don't, they don't feel a need. They don't feel a need to be looking in other directions. Right, right. And, and certainly, vision provides so much information. Uh, you know, just in my office now, I, I see envelopes and articles and books and the TV screen, and a couple of bottles of water. I mean, there's tons of information being provided to me by my vision that, it, you know, it, it's so overwhelming compared to the other senses. Uh, yet sound is so critically important as well, but it doesn't provide near enough, near as much information as vision does. Uh, could we say that in general, uh, because vision is a higher frequency of vibration, that if we could perceive at higher and higher frequencies, we would get even more information? Okay. Uh, uh, there again, now you're starting to think about issues quantum mechanical. Yes. Now, l- let me let me uh, narrate for a bit. Okay. Uh, the way quantum mechanics got started, this is more Max Planck than Einstein. But okay. Uh, Planck came up with the original good idea, and then Einstein said, hey, I can go places with that. You know, So <laughs> let me tell you what, Planck, what was going on with Planck. Like the Jews, yeah, that, Edison's uh, uh, invention to Hollywood. <laughs> 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 okay, please when, continue. When, when, Planck was, when Planck was a mature man in the, in the late uh, 1800s, uh, the electric light bulb was, was becoming popular. And the German uh, scientist said, well, are, are we wasting too much energy if we turn up the voltage? Is the energy being dissipated at higher ranges where nobody sees anything, ah. so it's, it's wasted? What an interesting so, question. Yes, okay. Okay, so let me tell you what happened out of that. So out of that, people began to study what they called black body radiation. Mm-hmm. And surprising, what they found was is that as you raise the amount of energy that you input into the light bulb, the frequency didn't go up in a linear fashion. You began to see uh, a bell-shaped population distribution Again. of a curve. Yes, another now, wait, wait, this, this, this is real good. Uh, let, let, me, let me go a little further with this. So Please. with this bell-shaped distribution, Max Planck said, okay, I've got some sort of like a, a Gaussian curve or a binomial distribution, and the energy particles are either in the high or the low output state. Let's give them like tossing quarters in a box. Mm -hmm. I have a box full of quarters, and I keep tossing the box, and they could come up all heads, they could come up all tails, Mm -hmm. but the most likely thing is they're going to be, half of the time they'll be heads and half the time they'll be tails. Right. Now, I want to tell you about, this is because of Jewish hubris, let me tell you what happened with this with Planck's model. Okay. For Planck's model to work perfectly, 
you would have to look at the band of intensity, the bell-shaped curve, and figure out from the height of the centermost uh, peak, mm -hmm. you'd have to try and figure out w w how many resonators there were, how many quarters in the shoebox. Yes. But there used to be a scientist named Abraham de Movry, Abraham de Movry, who okay. was a Frenchman who was thrown out of France by the Jews <laughs> the same way that uh, Archbishop uh, Richard Williamson is being oh, thrown okay. out of Argentina. All right. Uh, de Movry was thrown out, literally, of France. He ended up sort of like he used to live in taverns, more or less. He'd oh, sleep in taverns to stay warm. He was smart enough to be friends with Isaac Newton. Okay. But de Movry came up with the correct formula to interpret the bell-shaped curve, but the Jews never got even with de Movry enough. Mm -hmm. And you'll never find the correct formula in Max Planck's writing or Einstein's writing. So the bell-shaped distribution curve... Now, I'm going to explain this. When my book is finished, okay. I'm going to delve into this, but I'm not going to mention the conflict between the Jew and the Christian. Right. I'm just going to explain that this is was something that was horribly overlooked. But right. So, so electrical, we're getting privileged information here. <laughs> Thank you. Electrical, <laughs> yes, electrical engineering doesn't work, and the reason is because the Jew will punish you for one word. Mm -hmm. The Jew will punish you. And and that's a that's a very serious my reading of almost all of, of science is I find out that these really brilliant people have been pushed off into the side, that they yes. end up living under a bridge yeah. because they got into an argument with a Jew okay. and, and, and basically it ruined their whole life. Right, right. So so de Movry, his name has been banished, uh, pushed into the memory hole. I've certainly never ha heard of him. Okay. No. And yeah. you won't find his formula, but it hurts even in healthcare because to establish a normal range in a living population of humans, mm -hmm. you need his formula also. And the wow. Jew will wow. not allow that formula in any book. Well, this check any like, book. Yeah, this sounds like really important stuff. So uh, yes, it is. Yeah. What now? Getting back to the question of higher frequencies, what was the result of uh, you know the, um, the, the the German scientists increasing the energy here? What did they find okay, out? The, the two scientists who did the most of the work, their names were Lummer and Pringsheim. Okay. And Lummer and Pringsheim came up with this bell-shaped distribution, which basically said you can raise the temperature as high as you wish, but what happens is the the energy will concentrate at a middle frequency, and there'll be a symmetrical bell shape okay. on either side of it, sort of a ski slope going 